How far away is this guy? It seems like a rather stupid question, but perhaps it poses some value? When you look into the sky, all of the stars, planets, moons, nebulae, etc. seem to be the same distance from Earth, only differing in brightness or apparent size. This is no new realization. It is the basis for the many of those old astronomical maps you see all the time. They're called celestial spheres. The celestial sphere is actually a method used by astronomers to map the heavens. Why make things more complicated when you can just assume the stars are white dots on an infinitely huge sphere that rotates around the Earth? So yeah, the celestial sphere has infinite radius. This allows all stars or celestial objects to be projected away from the Earth onto a sort of canvas, making sky mapping, at least to casual sky observation, much easier and adds clarity to the process. Thus, if you took two parallel lines and projected them towards the celestial sphere, they would appear to converge, similar to how parallel lines in perspective drawings converge at vanishing points. But how do all the stars look like little dots on this canvas when they have actual size? To some relatively close stars, or even to planets, the reason for this is simply that we can't see the diameter of these glowing spheres with the naked eye. However, to more distant stars, the reason's even creepier. In physics, there exists a concept known as the Rayleigh Criterion, which states the point at which two adjacent light sources become indistinguishable from each other, and the image of them becomes unresolved. This occurs due to an effect known as diffraction. Let me explain. Imagine you sent a wave of water towards a wall with a small slit in it. When the wave comes out the other side, it would spread out, not just continue in a straight direction. This is diffraction, the natural tendency of waves to spread to the sides after passing through a hole, or door, if you will. If you want to know more about this, the Wikipedia page for Huygens Principle and Wavelets is in the description. Okay, back to Rayleigh. Whenever two sources send light rays through a slit or hole, each diffracts individually. This is known as single-slit diffraction. Creative, am I right? Each ray is now somewhat distorted and will create a dashed pattern of light and dark spots if projected onto a screen. Now, the Rayleigh criterion states that if the first dark spot of one of these light rays directly overlaps with the brightest spot on the other, the image is just resolved. If the rays were any closer, they would appear as one bright blob. With that under our belt, we can now explain stars. Quite a few stars and celestial objects in the night sky are so far away that the light rays from one side of them can't satisfy the Rayleigh criterion with light rays from the other side. However, they are bright enough to see on Earth. Thus, they just appear as tiny specks. According to the equation for the Rayleigh criterion, small wavelengths and large apertures create the least diffraction. Thus, a large telescope that reads X-rays would be one of the most well-suited instruments to observe the night sky especially if it was outside the atmosphere. And yet, there are still a bunch of celestial objects that we can never truly measure the size of. This is the reason for the methods astronomers use to measure the distance or size of galaxies, like using average universal lengths for these large amalgamations of stars, or employing supernovae as reference points. A side note, the celestial sphere is the reason for the amazing phenomenon known as retrograde motion. Link in the description, be sure to check it out. So when people say the sky's the limit, they're saying that you'll be able to go infinitely far away and become a tiny speck. Not sure if that's supposed to make you feel better, but whatever. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to let me know if you enjoyed it, and feel free to check out some of my other science videos. That's all for now. See you later.